Everybody have a seat, okay? Speak to that. Judge? Judge, this is not a haircut. Okay. All right, sir, can you see me and hear me? Yes. All right, can you tell us your name and date of birth, please? Otoniel Navarrete, O-T-O-N-I-E-L. Last name N A V A R R E T E. Date of birth 10 14 1985. All right, sir. I'm Commissioner Steve McCarthy, and this is your initial appearance on the following charges a Class II felony for molestation of a child, three Class II felonies for sexual conduct with a minor, one Class III felony for attempted sexual conduct with a minor and two class six felonies for sexual conduct with a minor. Um, can we have counsel announced, please? Janine Sorrentino on behalf of the state. Roland Rios appearing on behalf of Mr. Navarrete, Your Honor. All right. And, sir, your defense attorney is present in the courtroom standing in front of me. Let me know if you are not able to hear him when he speaks. I, I can hear him. All right. Okay, well let us know if, if you can't hear and Mr. Rios, would you like to be heard regarding either probable cause or release conditions? Your Honor, I would like to be heard with regards to release conditions. When you're um, ready. Mr. Navarrete uh, has limited financial means. He did just sell his home so he has uh, some money in the bank with regards to that but his salary, 24000 a year from the government and then 58000 a year from his other job. And he's going to need the, the funds that he has from the sale of his house in order to pay attorneys, pay experts, and uh, deal with this case. Um, I'd like to note that he did cooperate with the police and was cooperative with them when they came out to pick him up. Um, he has no prior criminal history, no failures to appear. Um, he is willing to surrender his passport if the court or the state would like that. Um, he's not a threat to the community or to others. Um, and given the nature of the allegations, the alleged victim is saying that this occurred over a year. He's not a threat to the alleged victim either and under these circumstances. So we would ask for a $15,000 secured bond um, today. All right, counsel, uh, just so I heard you correctly, did you say 50? 15. 15. Okay. All right, Ms. Sorrentino. 
Judge, I'm asking for a bond of $50,000. Clearly the uh, defendant has the means to pay this type of bond. Many of the people we see don't, but his income alone um, is, is quite high, not to mention the assets from the sale of his house. I think that this bond is warranted because um, due to the nature of charges, the defendant is facing upon conviction, a mandatory minimum sentence of 49 years if he's convicted. And the, the high uh, prison sentence here makes him a flight risk. And considering the fact that he does have significant assets and income, it would be fairly easy for him to take off and go someplace where we couldn't find him. So I think a $50,000 bond um, is the least amount that would be appropriate under the circumstances of this case. And I do think the court should require him to surrender his passport. All right, Ms. Sorrentino, um, do you have anything to say about uh, electronic monitoring? Um, electronic this, this would be in Sorry. This would be in addition to a bond. It's my understanding that electronic bond monitoring uh, is required by law, uh, given the charges. Is, is that your understanding as well? It is. Every single one of the charges falls under the um, uh, mandatory monitoring statute. All right. And do you have any recommendation um, regarding contact with minors? You should have no contact with minors, absolutely, whether in his family, out of his family, strangers. And I also think he should be prohibited from going any place where minors would typically hang out, schools, parks, malls, the toy aisle at Target, all of those places, because he, it, it's important for him to have no contact. If we find out he does, um, we will of course move to revoke whatever bond the court sets. All right. Mr. Rios, it is my inclination to uh, set a $50,000 secured appearance bond. I would not make it a cash bond. Um, so if um, the defendant needed to, he could use a bonding company to help him get out of custody. Um, sir, I'll give you the last word. Um, Your Honor, I would, I would ask for something reduced from 50000 I think that, as the court has noted, um, he is going to be placed on pretrial services with electronic monitoring. So that electronic monitoring should reduce any risk or flight risk as a result of the of the uh, charges and any sentence if the state can prove these charges beyond a reasonable doubt, which there's no guarantee at this point in time that they can. Um, they're mere allegations. He is entitled to the presumption of innocence. Um, I would also note that not only did he cooperate with the police and and go in with them when they indicated that they wanted to wanted to make an arrest that he intends to avail himself of the criminal justice system in this case and he's here he has hired an attorney um, and so there's really no indication at all given his behavior when the police contacted him and given any of his prior behavior with no criminal history and no FTAs that he's any type of a flight risk and the mere charges themselves being just allegations while they are serious um, I don't think that they warrant the $50,000 secured bond. Okay. All right. Thank you, Mr. Rios. All right. Um, sir, I, I am going to uh, impose a $50,000 secured appearance bond. Um, you can talk with your attorney about what that means. Um, it is not a cash bond. So if you want to, you can use a bonding company to help you get out of custody. Typically, a bonding company will want 10%. Um, as well as collateral uh, to cover the rest of the, the amount. I am going to impose uh, electronic monitoring. I'm also going to find that you are not allowed to have any contact with the alleged victim. You're also not allowed to have any contact with minors. Uh, you are required to surrender your passport at the next court date. Um, is there anything else that we need to put on the record now? No, sir. All right. And if I didn't already say it, uh, the next two court dates are going to be a status conference on August 12th and a preliminary hearing on August 16th, both at 1030 in the morning in the Superior Court of Phoenix.
All right. If there's nothing else, we're at recess on this matter. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you.